after repeated failed attempts to do this one-handed, <laughs> I put the camera on a tripod. <laughs> so it's shining down. Um, okay, so uh, in my continuing quest to light up the entire layout, uh, I'm getting back to lighting up the landing pads that are on the base, uh, that are on the, the wood. Um, uh, so, um, basically the landscaping, because you can see all the crater planes. So, there's going to be a lot of light coming from the tower, which is in that direction, and from the, um, from the, uh, rocket platform, which is right over here. Like, this is just one of the modules that are in the garage out of nine. Uh, this is module number four that, not that anybody besides me cares. <laughs> this is module number four. Um... And, and over there would be the habitat, which is being that direction there. And then the, the space station, uh, the, the monorail station is in that direction. Um, so I decided to start with, I have to work on that. Started with this strip here, the center strip for module four, five, and six. Uh, this is my first road base plate that I had to light up. Uh, historically, if you saw any of my very, very older uh, the Jeff and my train, uh, the space layouts, the, uh, the OBB CSL. I always put the yellow uh, one by one round bricks, trans yellow, uh, on the, the cross pieces, and then the red and green on the landing pads. The red and green is from 6980. Um, that's why it came, so that's why I do all my landing pads. I know that the Galaxy Explorer 928 came with four red ones on each side. Um, I think the red, green, red looks a little better, but that's just me. Um, so all my landing pads, including the landing pads up on top of the tower and on the uh, habitat are red, green, red uh, on each side. Uh, but anyway, so, and of course I showed you the video, I believe, a while back where I showed you how I made my, my spotlights. This guy right here. I'm going to point to this guy because that's lit up. Um... So, I, I built my double set of spotlights, like there's two lights on here. Um, and I did that so I could light up the landing pad better to have two lights shining on the landing pad. And I was actually gonna put another one on the other side, but I realized that it, then it's too bright. So um, I don't want to be daytime. This is supposed to uh, signify nighttime or uh, have the situation where it's night, it looks like it's nighttime. So, uh, but, but I have two lights per, 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 uh, two by two by 10 support. Um, and it works well, as you can see, it uses a spaceship to lit up. Uh, but I had a problem because, uh, I didn't want to put a whole brand new spotlight to light up this piece of road, right? Cause there's going to be vehicles on this piece of road going to spaceships, landing pads. So what I did just, and this is, this is the, um, Coincidence of overbuilding. <laughs> I have two two spotlights. So if I turn this thing just ninety, uh, so it's at the ninety degree mark, and do that. So get in there. Um, so now one spotlight's on the row plate, <laughs> and one spotlight's on the spaceship. <laughs> so this is what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm not going to put more light towers throughout the layout. Uh, like just a light separate things. I'm going to use my double light um, light spotlight tower here, and I'm just, that's all I'm going to do. And so now I have a well, I should have pulled on the vehicle and pulled on this guy. Uh, pull on this guy and put him on the road. There we go. And now you can see him. And of course, we can adjust the spotlights as necessary. So I think that's perfectly acceptable. And since the viewing area is going to be basically from that side, so it's looking this way, I want the spotlights to shine that way because then the people there can see this side. This side is going to be darker, uh, obviously, because the lights aren't shining this way. But and again, this side is going to be lit up by the big tower. <laughs> uh, as well, there's another landing pad that I'm going to have to light up over there. And there's another landing pad over here. And uh, that's already lit up. That's the one that's already lit up in the in the uh, videos I've done. Um, so I'm happy with this this uh, result of using my double lighted spotlight uh, tower to light up two two uh, base plates, two classic space base plates at the same time. Uh, I think that's going to work fine. And uh, I can't, you know, I I, I want to see the whole thing lit up. 
So I have this module done. Uh, this one's being powered by a battery box right now because I'm out of Life Flight uh, converter kit. And uh, I've asked Rob uh, very, very nicely to, uh, he's getting some more in. <laughs> so I'll have to order those when I'm done. But basically this module is now lit uh, to my satisfaction. Uh, the lights are here uh, and the, uh, the, the connection to my um, tower, my lighting, my lighting standard is done. Uh, and so this is the thing. So this is, it takes off. Uh, you take it off and you put it back in at a show and then it lights up. So uh, I couldn't be happier. I honestly could not be happier with my two by two electric plate solution. Uh, I have a spare one over here that I could show you. Um, I wasn't planning on talking about it in this video. Uh, let me turn on this light for a sec. See if I can find it. If it was here like two seconds ago. <laughs> oh, here it is. Um, caught up in a minifig. So, so basically you have a two by two electric plate uh, and a wire soldered to the steel part, the metal part inside. And then this wire has a connection, uh, Rob Hendricks Life Lights connection. And so that just plugs into the uh, basic kit that's underneath these base plates. Um, and so, and then that sits over here, under here. Now I build this little black support foundation uh, because when you solder to the metal inside these two by two plastic um, electric plates, uh, the, the, the soldering iron will often melt the plastic a little bit and therefore you lose your clutch power. <laughs> so, and that's what this one did. So this one, uh, I don't know why, I guess I left the soldering iron too long. Uh, and so, I mean, it'll sit there because the, 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 the foundation that I built here will hold it in. But um, uh, if, you knock, well, if you knock it out, it's not going to go anywhere. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's part of the modification issues when you actually modify Lego bricks and you have a soldering iron. Lego is plastic and Lego melts. <laughs> so, so you have to be a better solderer than I am. Uh, this one out, this one turned out to be pretty good. Um, I didn't melt. I don't know if you can see the top. Let's see. Uh, where's the camera? So that one didn't melt too much at all. And, um, and but this one did. Uh, I had a little bit of a tough time is that the solder did not want to bind to the metal nicely and, and solidly. So I, I think I left the soldering iron just on just a little too much and I'm not going to pull it off now because again, it's already wired in, but you can see that the, the, um, the studs on top, like, uh, on this one, the studs on top are melted and therefore as the studs themselves, not the metal, but it's the plastic studs that have the clutch flower, the whole piece is on top of it. Uh, and so the studs uh, too uh, are melted on this one. So the clutch power is not as good. I mean, it still doesn't look too bad, but you know, it is what it is. It, it is what happens when you take a soldering iron to Lego. <laughs> now I've cut these other stack of one, two, three, four, four um, two by two electric plates that I cut from a two by eight. And I'm going to be uh, making more of these uh, I'm going to put one over here, as I say, where the other landing pad is and the other landing pads that are there. So right now I have two landing pads and one road base plate lit up. Um, I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six landing pads on the, on the ground, on the, on the wooden modules, uh, and three road base plates. And right now, so that's nine in total. And right now I have three lit up. So I'm one third. I have six more to light up which is fine. Uh, I like doing this. I'm at the point now where it's becoming uh, easier. Uh, I do have to find more connectors because I'm running out of connectors. I do have a lot of old broken uh, life flight lights uh, that I basically either hot glued into something or whatever and I ripped out. So I, I got the ends. I always keep the end wires so I can solder them onto something else. Uh, so I'll be going through and uh, making a whole bunch of these two by two uh, wired uh, metal, sorry, electric plates with the uh, life lights, big tails on them. So I can, uh... there we go. I have to figure that out. So um, that light keeps on going out. I think there's a loose connection into the, uh, the basic kit. 
Uh, anyway, uh, I hope you liked it. Uh, it's not that informative. It's just a more of a status update that I am um, moving along on getting this stuff all lit up. And I have um, a bunch more modules that I have to modify in order to... Um, but I'm thinking I'm down to my last two. Well, I guess I got a whole bunch of spare life light kits, but I don't think I have any or basic kits. I don't have any lights to go on them. So I'll have to order those as well. So uh, Rob's going to expect a big order from me at some point in the near future. <laughs> and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, this is just my status update. I am going to say goodnight to everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, it's my weekend and uh, I wanted to spend some time doing this. Um, I really do enjoy this. So um i know that some people are not happy with people who modify lego i again i try to keep the modifications down to a as minimum as possible but also with the idea that i want to spool up and take down this layout easier and i could have done it another way uh that wouldn't have modified lego uh especially the two uh two by eight electric plates and cutting them up but this is so easy and you just plug it in, right? And you just push it down. It, you know, it has to be on. And it comes on. Like, it, it don't get easier. <laughs> it really doesn't get any easier than that. Um, so uh, I, I don't recommend it. It's not for the faint of heart. Uh, you will destroy some bricks uh, if you start doing this. Soldering and Lego don't mix very well. <laughs> I'll say that right now. And again, I try to keep the soldering and Lego down to a minimum. All my soldering is on the Life Lights uh, wiring to make it longer and, and split it and whatever else I want to do with it. But the 2x2 two two electric plates, I, you have to solder the wire to it in order for it to conduct electricity uh, from the Life Lights kits. Uh, so that's where the soldering iron and the Lego actually mix. Um, other than that, I think uh, we're done here. Um, as I say, every, I hope everybody's doing uh, well in their world. I am doing quite fine in mine, uh, doing what I can to... Uh, oh, so there's another little thing. On my tower, uh, the, 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 this tower here, I don't know if you can see that. No, it's not even in the picture. But I got my cake topper over here, and uh, I'll tilt this up. So you can see it. There's my cake topper. Now what I did, I'll even turn it up more. Get this thing out of the way. What I did for the cake topper now is, of course, on top of all the dishes, uh, because this is what Lego was standard back in the late 70s, was a green one by one uh, trans green uh, round brick. Uh, when you put a light inside the trans green round brick, one by one. Of course, the bottom stud, the bottom of the brick is open, so this, you see the white light coming out. And it really does make things brighter. But what I did is I put a one by one round trans green plate on top of the, or pushed into the bottom of the one by one round brick. So it stops the light. And of course, I can't get at it right now. Uh, it stops the white light from shining out and ruining everything. So all of my radar dishes now have a one by one round plate on top or on bottom of the one by one round brick trans green uh and uh, and so I'm, I'm debating whether or not oh i really have to work on this i'm debating whether or not i have to do the same here um because of course all these are open studs on top and so that the white shines straight up no i don't mind that because you can see that in my hand right there right uh i don't mind that because it does light up the ship a little better uh, I will make a determination. I know that the one landing pad I already did is I used the um, the one by one uh, round plate without or not with the hollow stud, and then I put a trans red, trans green uh, one by one round plate on top of that. So these things are shorter, only two plates tall. Why is that one off now? <laughs> things are gonna drive me nuts. Um, but I, 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 and I wasn't sold on that. So I'm going to have to make a determination about that too. So I have some, uh, some decisions to make. Um, and uh, we will keep you abreast of the changes of the situation as they happen. Um, I will talk to everybody soon. Uh, take care. Everybody stay safe. And uh, see ya.